Good morning. Uh, -da -ba -ba. I'm normally a morning person, but like for the past few days, I've just woken up and just feeling blah. Like I just don't want to, I just can't do anything. Um, but I thought I would, you know, you know what? I'm gonna make some, uh, gonna make some avocado on toast. Gonna make some, uh, some, uh, what was this? Jasmine, some uh, jasmine green tea. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this because I've been putting this off for like, the past. I've taken these photos like over a week now. I've been meaning to just like sit down and edit them, but I've not edited them because I've been like, oh, but I want to do an edit and chill episode on them. Uh, but no, whatever. It's, it's not an excuse. I'm just, just telling to you. I woke up and then said I'm gonna do it today, uh, and then made, I'm forcing myself. To have the energy. The avocado helped though, it helped. Uh, if you ever need energy, snatch up some uh, <laughs> some delicious avocado. You can see the energy somewhere. Anyway, anyway, so I've got uh, some photos, <laughs> like with every episode, I've got some photos. The rules are available for you to download. I would also like to politely ask if you do, like by all means, download the rules from this, uh, from this episode and edit them. You can play around with them, try something different. Um, just as long as you, you can learn, you know, like see how someone else works. Like the whole thing is you can see how I work with them and then you can, you know, do this, like do your own thing with them. So, you know, uh, it's a good way of learning also to play around and see what you can do with someone else's images. Um, but please do not put them on Instagram as your own because I've had a couple of people um, who've like tagged me in it where they've like tapped on the screen and tagged me in it so a person like looking at the image won't know it's mine until they've tapped on the image and see that I'm tagged on it but that still doesn't mean anything it just means you've tagged me in it, it doesn't say this photo was taken by Ray but this is a guideline please do not um, post them um, like anywhere where they can be considered or perceived as your own uh, because that's uh, that's naughty, it's a bit cheeky. Uh, but yeah, just, you can post them to me on, on Twitter. You can post them on Twitter, providing that you um, you uh, say that they're taken by me. Um, and uh, yeah, and also plug uh, Edit and Chill. Um, yeah, whatever whatever goes. But yeah, anyway, let's, let's, let's get on to the fun stuff. So I've got um, some photos from two photo shoots that I've done um, I was going to say earlier this month, but it's September now. I think this was like towards the end of, both of these were towards the end of August. Uh, some with my friend Josie and uh, a model who I worked with a year ago uh, for the first time. And this is our second shoot together, but she's great, uh, called Emily Smith. Um, yeah, anyway, so let's start off with uh, Josie. So Josie, uh, I always find it weird saying the name Josie out loud because it's also my mum's name but I'm not talking about my mum. She is not my mum. Let's just make that clear. She is not my, uh, I'm not related to her in any way. Let, let's just leave it at that. But uh, you know, uh, here's Josie. <laughs> I met her on Instagram, I believe. And uh, we just got talking on there. And then quickly we talked about doing a shoot and she's done a couple of shoots before in uh, Ibiza. Uh, with a couple of club photographers um, and it's quite funny because one thing that she said about how I was doing the shoot was my my like whole kind of like approach was very um, compared to the club photographers very slow so if I remember, like they were going to um, which I, I I think is in most cases the worst way to do a portrait of someone um, Especially like these kind of portraits, like um, one of the like the most important thing um, in most cases with a with portraiture is the communication between you and the subject, um, and that could be the communication could be like a quick like shh kind of thing. Um, if you're doing street photography, you might want that kind of communication, that kind of burst, like a surprise almost. But with this, where it's like a planned thing and you're there to take photos of them. You know, you just, you know, I, I can't, I can't ever see that approach 
working out as well as this, where you're taking your time, you're being slow, you're communicating verbally. 50% of it is verbal communication, and the other 50% is um, the communication with the sound of your shutter. Because the sound of the shutter does a lot subconsciously um, to the model's brain. So your subject could be like, you know, like imagine you're in the subject's shoes, uh, especially if you're new and experienced, or even experienced, and, and all you hear is shh, 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 like you don't know what to do. You, you sort of feel overwhelmed, whereas if the photographer's taking his time, shh, shh, like, then like you feel more at ease, you know when to change it up a bit, and because you're, you as a photographer are also taking time, you can do things much more like check your uh, your whole frame, your composition, your framing, your exposure. You can check everything and you're less likely to make mistakes. Like here, I took my time to make sure that these strands were in the shot. Sometimes I miss things out. Like I just wanted to make sure that these were in because it would look like these are little things that I never used to notice before. But do you see like how kind of awkward? when it kind of like cuts, cuts them out. It, it's just kind of, that looks a whole lot cleaner, you know, because I've taken the time to do it. Things like making sure the joints are in shot. Um, there's other things to keep it clean. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like there. I think this shot would have been better if I went a little bit wider and got the elbow in. But at the time I felt like that was okay. Um, yeah, joints, hands, feet, I, I, and like, if there's a background that works as a frame, adjusting them so they, they, you know, like in this image here, I told her to, I wanted her specifically in that, you see how like there's, uh, you can see it more clearly here, but there's three bursts of light. Um, I wanted her face to be in one of them, like completely in, but if she was out a little bit or, uh, like I took the time to properly think about it and you can't think when you're going shh, 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 shh. and also like when you get back to edit them you don't want like you know 400 photos from one photo shoot um like I aim for around a hundred for like a one hour two hour shoot you know because you know like the more you take generally means the more bad ones you're gonna have like you're like there's a much higher ratio. Like if, if I was to do this shoot, I'll stop rounding in a minute, but if I was to do this shoot with Josie in two hours and took like 400 photos, um, but if I, like uh, compared to, if I was to do the same shoot, but only take like 70 photos, um, not only will the ratio in the batch of 70 be, uh, there'll be more good ones, Overall, there will be more good ones because I've spent on those 70 shots. I spent more time and thought about the shot before I took the shutter. And in a in a scenario like portraits, portraiture, you have the time to actually think about the shot, uh, which you don't have when you're doing club photography or gigs. You don't have as much time to think about it. But whenever I can, whether that be for events or club. I don't really do clubs, but uh, gigs. I try to take the time as much as I can because at the end, at the end of the evening, when I look at my shots, I want to be able to whittle down and find the ones where I've, like, you know, you can tell I thought about it and you can see that thought process. You can see the little, the little bits of grass. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm gonna just start editing, okay? That's what the, the series is about. Um, so yeah. I, I did have a little play around with some of these earlier on and I got to something that I liked but I can't remember what I did I just kind of I really like the the top she's wearing this the color of it kind of goes well um, okay I think no no I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it mm -mm -mm. I got asked recently if uh, I could sum up my like portraiture style in uh, you know like a couple of sentences, and uh, I found that really hard. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, some people say that I have a style, which I like. I think that's a really great uh, compliment to say that there's like a definitive, like you can look at an image and tell it's mine. Uh, I really like that. I don't know why. I'm still waking up. I'm normally a morning person, but I'm still waking up. I normally don't go to the spot room at all, at all this early on. I don't know why I'm doing this. Please forgive me. Um, I'm really, I'm kind of, I've got like a weird throat at the minute. I've got like, like I don't feel it until I start really talking or eating, but like there's just a lump in my throat. Ah, I just like, ah. It's really annoying, basically. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know, I've just, I've just been like overall just a bit blah and like mentally and physically for the past like few weeks. Um, I'm working on quite a few projects at the minute, um, not all of them too creative or fun, but um, things that I have to be like daily kind of catching up on and switching between and I don't know I feel like my whole summer has been mostly <laughs> doing that I'm starting to feel this the tones here I quite like um, but yeah oh before I carry on talking about my uh, me mental state uh, I kind of defined my um, my style as subtle I like things very natural um, I don't like using a whole lot of like Photoshop tactics um, I did that because I'm using Lightroom but things like spot removal tool um, smoothing skin out I don't really like doing um, too much I don't like my pictures to look edited if anything I want them to look not edited but I also like the look of film I try to go for the look of film and that doesn't mean super vintage faded shots uh, with tons of grain um, I mean like just a natural like uh, what's the word familiar colors that you associate with film just like the good skin tones the uh, you get the details and the highlights but as well as the, the details and the shadows like I I like contrast when it's like this when you can see the brightest parts of it you can see details in the brightest parts of the image and in the darkest um, that's just how I like it um, and sometimes they're moody um, like I make my shots a bit colder than some other people. Like I noticed that with um, when I give you my rules, a ton of you uh, like to edit them a little bit warmer than I I would. But uh, yeah, that's okay. That's fine. You do you. Um, just know I. Uh, that's not what I would have done. <laughs> not not to make that like to um, influence you in any way. So one thing I'm doing here, which is always a struggle. I like to change the hue of the greens and I don't know I just I just don't like that green I don't like how that green looks against her right now I just don't think it matches but that's how it actually looks in real life so I just take a little bit of the green out and replace it with some yellow and I think it looks a little bit better I don't like to do it all the way actually all the way is looking not too bad a little bit less mm, let's go there what do you think? You can't reply. This is a video. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to sync it with this image because it was taken from the same angle. This one. I wanted to play around with props during this shoot. Um, so I went into the supermarket just before the shoot to get some food. Because similarly, I was lacking energy, so I just needed some uh, coconut water. Um, or something, anything. It doesn't have to be coke. I got coconut water in the end, but uh, big up, big up the coconut water. Um, yeah, I I just needed something to fill me up, you know. And I was like, crap, I don't have any props. And I just saw this uh, this pineapple, <laughs> and we messed around with. It. There's a few other shots that are really funny that I find funny. Um, whether it, it just looks a bit silly. Um, yeah, Josie was great for, for someone with not much modeling experience. Um, she did she did require quite a bit of directing because she just didn't know what to do sometimes. Um, whoops. Yeah, she just didn't know what to do. Um, but that, you know, that's okay. Uh, 
as a photographer, it, it's it's good when you get to a point when you're confident with that kind of thing because, like, not saying that I've been doing it for too long. I've only been doing it like working with. Um, when I say working with models, I mean like also. I should really be doing this a lot smaller. Um, I mean just like going out and shooting with a subject and like your goal is to take photos of them and like have this kind of like structure where you, you're directing them like yeah I've, I've not been doing that like all my life or anything but um like definitely I feel so much more confident directing now like I know what to say I know what I want um just one thing about my shoots is I never know what I want before the shoot it's only when I'm there, um, which n is not how some people work. Some people, you know, like it proper planned. It's different with filming. When I'm doing a film, um, I'm very precise with everything and I feel horrible uh, if, if something wasn't like, you know, wasn't, didn't have like loads of rewrites because um, I need to be 100% with it but with the uh, with portraiture I guess I use photography as like it's kind of like my little my little outlet to let off steam because it, it, I don't have to I don't have to like doesn't feel not that like working on films feels like loads of work but it's like you know as there's a lot of things that you need to prepare and plan and creatively you know it needs to be like planned down to a T or else it's just not going to tell your story the story's not going to come across well but uh, with portraiture it's like, and then photography in general it's like well specifically portraiture I can just turn up um, and just use what I got and, and get results that I'm really happy with that's the thing about it um, that's why I kind of like it it's just kind of easy all you need arrange time in a day with someone that you want to take photos with and then just you know pick a location that's it check the weather <laughs> that, that's the most like work I do behind the scenes um, sometimes I'll plan out a uh, I'll plan out what I want them to wear but more often than not I don't um, the, the direction I give to most models when they ask how should they do their makeup or hair because I never really work with a makeup artist because, you know, I like things looking natural. I'm not saying that a makeup artist couldn't help towards that. Because um, there's a whole big thing um, where makeup can really make someone look more natural for photos and film. Um, but um, for photo shoots, I like to just keep it chill. Um, back to the communication thing. A lot of the time it works a lot better when it's just me and the model then it just feels like a chill if anything I want them to feel more like we're just a couple of friends hanging out um, that I find generally works better but um, but yeah like what do I want to do here Ray what do you want to do when I'm just toggling at things, that's what I ask myself. What are, you, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do here? I'm happy with that, I think. For now. For now. Yeah, I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna go on to this next one. This next photo has, um, strange, I've not, I've not done lighting like this. So, you might not notice it now, but when I add some, when I add a preset which adds contrast to the image, you can see that the brightest part of the image is her back, which I've never done before. Um, I, 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 I did. There's something about this image that I quite like that I showed a couple of friends and they agreed on. They like this as well. Maybe it's the pose. Maybe it's the whatever. But um, generally, as a viewer your eyes brought to the brightest part of the image, which in this case is a back, which is in most cases not like what you want to draw. This is what you want to draw um, attention to. Um, 
yeah, the the eyes is what communicates emotion the most, and the facial expression second, and you know the the back, not not so much emotion going on in the back, but that's what we got. That's the brightest part of the image. Um, so I wanna, I don't know. I just kind of her skin just looks really nice. She's got she's got good skin. So I just kind of wanna. I'm not too sure. Let's go down to pack seven. Not really. I don't. I haven't used pack seven as much as I felt like I would. Because pack se seven's full of like stuff like this, very like neutral tones. I feel. I felt like it would be really up my alley. I quite like Ag Agfer Ultra though. I go to that sometimes. But Etrochrome, I thought I would go to loads of times because Etrochrome is a film that I I've shot with. I've shot film with. Um, I don't know, um, I just don't go to it that often, and I'm not really feeling it right now, I was kind of feeling, let's go back to Ultra, Egg for Ultra, hmm, this one's amazing, it's a little bit, it's like a green hue, that is a bit, I don't know, Egg for Portrait. I was getting more towards the maybe. I don't know. This is a tricky one. You've got like the kind of golden hour glow in there as well. Um, this one will like balance before we continue. It's important to try to sort out the white balance and exposure before you start adding these guys onto it. Black and white it's a kind of interesting image but you can see even clearer. Let's like close your eyes and now open them. Where is your attention brought to? The fucking back. Don't know if that's good or not. I might just lighten the shadows a little bit um, in the face. That looks edited and I hate it. Bless me. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I'm interested in seeing what you guys would do with this kind of image. I might just go to portrait. Play it safe. Play it safe. Can't go wrong with portrait. But you can, but um, not all the time. If I just lighten her face, that might help. No, it looks like she's wearing a mask. So I might have to light the neck as well, just to, you know, it's tricky. Definitely looks like she's wearing a mask. Hmm. That is better. Not the best, but better. What do I want to do? What do you want to do, Ray? Um, while I'm trying to figure that out, I'll tell you about what I've, what I've been up to. So I'm producing a, a music video at the minute, that I quite like. <laughs> just going back to the, you know, back to pack seven, just kind of natural. Yeah, I kind of like that. I want to bring out the eyes a little bit. What have I been up to? Uh, so I've been working, this, this whole summer, I, I've wanted to... Like every, every summer um, since I, I like finished college, I've been like, you got to make stuff. You got to just like kind of focus on things. And like, I, I generally try to focus on one thing at a time. Like this summer, I'm going to focus on portraiture. I'm going to do loads of headshots. I'm going to get my name out there as a photographer. And yeah, then I feel bad about not making much for YouTube or not making many films or not trying to find like any music video work or you know, I've got, like, I don't get writer's block, I have the opposite of it, I have too many things and not enough time, or money, and it's blah, um, yeah, I've never experienced writer's block, um, I get ideas all the time and I write them down and I feel bad that I can, I can't do them all, um, 
you know, I, I have some ideas which I'm still like real keen on doing from like years and years ago and they're like proper fleshed out and I still want to do them and uh, yeah, but this summer I said to myself, I want to do I want to do as much as I can uh, in all of those departments there's a few portrait documentaries that I want to get going um, a few like kind of documentary kind of projects going to YouTube going um, like for my YouTube channel I want to get back on doing some Wayfarer sessions because I've not done one since Christmas um, but I've approached so many musicians that I like who I want to get involved with those for those of you who don't know Wayfarer sessions is a like a it's a one take live session uh, series that I do where I I film a live session in one take. Normally they're done outside, which is not the best way to do uh, live sessions because there's so many things that can go wrong. Planes, dogs, just background noise in general. Um, weather. <laughs> just so much. Um, I'm happy uh, with that now. Might raise the shutters a little bit. Let's move on. Um... But yeah, like, you know, they don't take too long to do. Because they're one take, there is no... The edit is really quick. <laughs> the edit is literally grade it. You just colour grade it. Um, which, by the way, I keep getting messages asking if I can do a video on colour grading. Um, but I'm a bit wary of this computer. This, this computer can just about do this. Uh... Premiere uses a lot more, a lot more of your computer's energy than a Lightroom, so uh, I don't know. I may, I, I will try. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, they don't. Filming a one take live session doesn't take too long at all. It's literally, you film it, and it, they take a couple of hours because you, you know, uh, I don't like having a strict plan too much a lot of the time. Well, the ones I've done so far I haven't had a strict plan. It's literally play the song, like I'll listen to the song if it's recorded already, um, on the way there, come up with some ideas, find a spot, sometimes a spot will be planned, um, the one I did with Miles that a lot of people liked was planned, the one with Savannah that I think is, is the one that's got the most views at the minute, because that's what I care about, that's all I check, um, sorry, just got distracted. Don't know what I want to do here again. What's wrong with me today? Um, so, uh, yeah, the one with Savannah. I wanted to do that at the top of Primrose Hill. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Primrose Hill is a hill in near Camden, um, and it's like you can see. Like it, it, well, it's a hill. It's a hill in a park, and you can you can see so much of London, London cityscape. It's really nice. I strongly recommend it for like a summer's day. Uh, I've been there a few times, um, mostly during not the summer, during not the summer. Um, but I filmed Savannah's one. Oh, it must have been last summer. That was like the oh, I haven't filmed one in so long. But yeah, that you know that was one of the latest ones that I've done, even though that was filmed last summer. I'll get back to it, I promise. Um, and I, I've been there a few times, and it's been fairly quiet, and I wanted to do it right at the top of the hill, so you could see the cityscape and maybe some trees, like in the background. Um, and uh, I get there. I actually went there the day before. I was meeting up with some friends, and they were like, where do you want to hang out, Ray? I want to go to Primrose Hill. Uh, and inside my head, I was thinking, I actually want to go there to check out the, how busy it is, what the weather's like, and maybe pick out a couple of spots to consider for, for the shot. And uh, <laughs> so we get there, and it's practically just us. Practically just us. And I was feeling pretty good. Next day, made up with Savannah, we, we start walking up there, and it's just super busy like crazy busy and the song we were doing was the moon song a fairly quiet song um 
and I wanted to film it around dusk and there were so many like people people there with dogs and children and barbecues and music playing from Bluetooth speakers it was the worst but a few people have mentioned in the comments that they've liked the background noise personally I don't know I've moved on from it <laughs> but at the time I was feeling we'll just work with what we got we'll just work with what we got but that was been like the hardest one to do um, filming wise and then in post-production um, Nathan was not enjoying it um, trying to clean up that audio as much as he can um, yeah it was just not a good experience for us but yeah there, there, there have been comments complaining about the background noise but funnily enough there, there are more praise in it which I don't think anyone saw coming but uh I definitely want to avoid scenarios like that in the future. But I'm filming one this weekend, hopefully if it all goes to plan, with Melanie Barker, who someone I've been meaning to film with for a long time. Um, and yeah, looking forward to doing that. Haven't picked the location yet. I have one in mind, but I want to double check with someone. This image I like. I love how it just draws you to her eye, her expression. I love her hair all good it's all good um you see old me would leave it at that but i don't like that much contrast anymore <laughs> okay let's play around with something else actually let's leave it let's leave it you know what leave it That's more like it, Ray. That is more like it. Let's just enhance his eye. Iris enhancement is something I've definitely died down on. Something that I've used in every single shot. Like this shot, you can kind of... No, I'd say in this shot it's just about usable. But if it looked edited, if it really, really pops, which is some people's style, like I used to do it all the time. I used to do it like that. If that looks doesn't look real, that's not what I'm about. If that's what you're about, go for it, do it. But that's not what I'm about. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it's just not my thing. <laughs> Sorry, I just repeated that last uh, sentence in my head and I sound like such a dickhead. I'm <laughs> not saying it's a bad thing, it's just, it's just not my thing. Fuck off. <laughs> But no, it, it's not my, uh, just not, not my taste. But it's not bad taste, I'm acknowledging that. You know what's bad taste? HDR. What's the deal with that? Why do people like that? Now, if you like HDR, that's cool. Just know that, uh, I, I will, I, I will not, like, be able to not think about, you know, Flickr, circa 2008. When I see someone, like, yeah, like HDR. Generally, with photos, I like photos that represent reality or like use color well, or just like you know. But HDR, I think, in most cases, just looks weird. It just looks surreal and not in a good way. Just kind of like. Ugh. Also, anyone, like almost anyone, can do it well. I should take that back. Not everyone can do it well. For now, I'm going to leave it at that. I think I'm happy with that. And now we're moving on to Emily. Emily, I was telling Emily during this shoot, but when I first shot with her, um, like, she was the first experienced model that I've worked with. Uh, prior to working with her, I've worked with a lot of YouTubers and actors and, you know, people who are used to working in front of the camera, but not you know, not modeling per se. And, uh, you know, I was really, cause, I, cause I've never studied photography. I thought if I studied photography, maybe I would, I would know the lingo. I would, I would know what to say. I would, I would know how to direct. I would know if there's like a structure to how you should do shoots or how you should just do things. 
Um, but then I learned from friends who are studying photography that you don't actually learn that in photography. Um, a lot in a lot of photography courses, they don't teach you how to work with models. Um, they teach you how to like, you know, theory and stuff. But working with models is something you get from experience, and experience was something I did have at the time. Um, but I wasn't confident in. I didn't have that kind of assurance from anyone. I was just kind of doing my own thing and hoping that that was good. Um, I haven't changed too much with how I work with models. I'm a little bit more decisive. Like back then, I I I, I wouldn't know what I would want straight away, so I would just give myself options. Um, but now I'm a little bit more. You know, I'm taking far less photos basically. Um, which is a good thing, because it's easier to whittle down and pick what you want. And generally, like I said in the beginning, you get better results. <sighs> I kind of like that with contrast. This image, I like the outfit. Um, again, I did the, the same thing with Emily, I said. Try to keep, you know, makeup minimal. Um, outfit simple and she was just like I don't really do simple too often I don't know yeah uh, I have this and I was like do it that's great uh, she's kind of looks like she's off on her way to go play tennis or something <laughs> uh, but we went to Shoreditch I went to just like gritty parts and uh, shot around there um, but no I like it I like the outfit choice I kind of want to keep the contrast, but I kind of don't at the same time, just out of... Oof. I think that much contrast, because like, you can still see the highlights. The highlights is the most important thing for most images, I think. I don't like a pure, like... Some people will post an image like that, and I think that is... that Because you're, you're, you're just drawn to this, the skirt. You're just drawn to it. I, I hate it. I want to, I wanna, you know. I've had, uh, recently I had someone hit up my DMs and was proper like, just like, not constructive for this criticism, but just mean. He was like saying all these things about how like how my images look flat and boring and, you know, he was talking about how you only shoot white women. This girl's Asian, so, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, if you're like, you only shoot white women, what's wrong with you, you fucking scumbag? Yo, he's calling me a waste man. He was, um, just, he was like commenting on my, like, any photo that was of me, he would just comment, like, just something negative about my appearance. He'd just be like, you got big fat lips. Um, that was one thing that got at me, these lips, you know. Call them luscious. I'll smile. Call them big fat. You know, that's not that's not nice. Don't say that to me. Get on my fucking face. But yeah, that combined with like how I've been feeling these past few days. It's really got to me. Got to me right in there. I don't know if I like it kind of maybe like that. Or I like the mood. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just stick to this, but bring down. Hmm. Maybe. I think I'm gonna go with this, actually. I quite like that. I quite like how moody it is. Moody! I'm just gonna fix the. Position a little bit. One thing I haven't been doing today, I completely forgot on the day today, is check um, general kind of, you know, that's why I always do check how it's going to crop for Instagram. Oh no! Oh, that's just, I've got to crop out the fucking skirt for Instagram. That's the one by one looking. A classic. That's better, but I don't like doing this anymore. That's actually alright. For Instagram, 
but I do notice I get more engagement on photos. I don't know about you guys, it's not like something which I read into too much, but I notice I get more engagement when I post a portrait that actually is a portrait. I could bring a bit more of this guy in like that. That maybe? That for Instagram? I'll get more of the skirt in. More room for the skirt. Ah, a bit more headroom, but... You know, these are the problems I face, guys. My life is hard. I'm getting hate. <laughs> People commenting on my lips. And I have to cut out skirts and run out of shots sometimes. You know, it's not easy being me. Hey, that's a bit too warm. That I kind of like already. I'm just going to see how the cool version of her. Is that an insane? Are they, was I just clicking on the same? Yeah, I was. I have a portrait in pack seven of Viscor. Viscor. VSEO. How do you guys like to call it? Um, I've heard Visco. I've heard VSEO. I don't know what I've called. I've done a couple of videos. Definitely on Edit and Chill, where I've mentioned that I use uh, presets by VSEO, Visco, Visco. <laughs> but oof. I'm just gonna run through the photos again because a lot of the time, here's a little secret about Edit and Chill. So many times have I gone back through the photos and done little changes before I actually post them on Instagram or anything like that. Um, like here, this one, I'm just not feeling. Just a bit more contrast would do it for me. Maybe, who knows. Um, maybe warmth. <laughs> That's what I'm lacking. I don't want her skin to look, she has very um, tan skin and I don't want it looking, you know, orangey. That is too much, Ray. Um, yeah, but like, when you're taking a break from looking at an image, or especially when you're focused on a completely different kind of image, like this, and you go back, you, you look at it with fresh eyes, um, the kind of like thing that colorists or retouches always talk about is, you go to the toilet, go make yourself a cup of tea, come back, and you're like, oh, what's this shit? Looks awful. Um, I'm actually kind of happy with this one. I really couldn't pick between these ones. I think this one's my favorite. I've had a person talk about my, my style and mention how I seem to like eye contact. And yeah, that goes back to what I was saying before about like how one thing that I really like about photography is, and film, and most things really, um, you know, you could describe photography or film as magic like oh like you can tell stories and evoke emotion in a person and it's just magic it's like you know you can do that to a viewer you can make them feel things it's, it's magic yeah is it nah it's not it's not magic um much like real life magic it, it all can be explained um there's science to it there's there's like you know the thing about eyes that i like is the communication thing one thing that I always tell models with how to, this is, I mainly tell this to um, people who aren't used to the camera, like if I'm doing headshots for an actor or a musician. One of the things I tell them is, I'm going to give you a little lesson about eyes here. So, um, let's go back to nature. So a deer, uh, a mouse, what do they have in common? They're both prey. They're both preyed on by predators. And their eyes are big and round. And that is, that is so it can let in so much, like as much light as possible um, so that they can, you know, see everything around them clearly and they can keep an eye out for predators. And also the fact that they're wide means there's a lot of movement that their eyes can do. Predators, on the other hand, they're often a bit more, not squinting, but tighter. They can see their, their eyesight is more direct, focused, uh, meaning that they can spot the prey um, like, you know, like eagles can see their prey from miles and miles away and honing on them. 
uh, and then humans, we're omnivores, you know, we're, we're both prey and preyed on. So we can switch between uh, when we're scared, uncertain, nervous, anxious, all of the bad things um, that we don't normally want to convey uh, or like want to be associated with our personality um, is, is, is associated with wide eyes, going wide eyes like deers and headlights. And if someone like you don't even think about it, if you're getting your photo taken and you're new to it and you're not comfortable, um, you go wide-eyed. Like, think about it like, you know when you're at a party or something and, you know, there's loads of things going on and it's loud and there's music playing uh, and there's someone taking your photo and you have no idea what the group photo, for like a group photo, you don't know when they're going to take it, you don't know how you're going to look. So you just kind of like smile and you're like, you, if you look at group photos, you can tell people are much more wide-eyed because they can't see the shot, they can't see how they look, they don't know. Um, and they're not aware, they're not like actively thinking, oh shit, I'm scared, I'm scared of what the fuck's going on. But it's like, they go wide-eyed. It's just like a natural survival thing that we do when we're uncertain, scared, nervous, all of those things. But when someone's more confident, they do, you see how my eyes change there? Um, so what I tell people who aren't used to it, in most cases, you want to come off confident, you want to come off strong. So you just kind of, if you act, if you physically try to force yourself to do this, you're going to struggle. So what I say is to think confident, you're confident, you're in control of this. And to help your model get into that mind frame is to show them the images, show them what they look like, constantly show them, work with them, compliment them. When you do all those kind of things, it's easier for them to put themselves in this confident kind of thing. And the physical like thing, like this is wide-eyed, uncertainty, scared, blah, blah, blah. And there's squinting, which is sun in your eyes. And then there's squinching, which some people have called it, which is where you kind of go in a little bit like that. There's like a few muscles. I can feel like a few muscles up here, but especially around here working. Um, and it's not something that you, you normally ever have to do on demand. So we're not, no one's really used to doing it whenever they want. But, you know, it's... Uh, it's, um, sorry, my mind just went blank. Um, yeah, it, it's something which is very useful for photos, I think. This one, I think, will be quite good for Instagram. I might crop in a little bit. Actually, for Instagram, I kind of like it like that. I quite like it like that. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I think I'm about done here. Let's just do one more little roundup. Mmm. Something about this I'm just not liking. It's the, it's the fucking hue of the greens. It's this green here. I hate it. This blue's not changing at all. I don't know. What are you gonna do? No, <laughs> not that. That's not what you're gonna do. Maybe make it a little bit. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. You might see this on my Instagram. Change a little bit in the future. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching Edit and Chill. I have been Ray. And uh, rules are available. Don't put them on your Instagram. <laughs> and say that they're yours. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching.